so let's start off with um, what's the meaning behind your name? We, we uh, both sold, smoked, <laughs> bought, consumed a ton of weed together when we first met in college. And like, we were putting all the songs together. We wanted to just like do something that was kind of a slang, colloquialism, that like loud. getting fucked up. Yeah, like something that was like <laughs> vaguely about partying, but not so much so where like your mom would see it and know like, oh, that's drugs or that's weed or getting drunk. You know what I mean? Like, Loud Pack, we just felt was like a good in between where like, our demographic knew what it meant. Everyone kind of knows it's vaguely about partying and it just has a good ring to it. You know, loud pack. Just like, bring the noise. Yeah, that's good. So I know you just got here, but you're probably really excited for your set. Um, what gets you the most amped while you're playing the show? They are energy. Yeah. You know, we, we see them bug out, we go 10 times as hard. And it's like, we've made a point, I mean, we just did a tour with Paper Diamond and played like a ton of different rooms. And whether it's 50 kids or it's 5,000 kids, you know, you got to give them the same energy every night. But whenever they give it back, it's like that's when we have the best shows. So. Shows like this are so fun because there's so many kids out there. It's like you give them a crazy song and like it's a no brainer. Like if it works, it works. Like kids feed off each other when there's thousands of kids around the place. It's a room of 500 kids. So like you can just play stuff that we don't normally get to play. We feel weird playing in like a nightclub and it just yeah. goes stupid crazy at a festival. And I think kids at, at festivals like this are like super open-minded, you know, like they come here to see 30 acts. It's not like just going to a venue to see two DJs, you know, it's so like they're ready for new music. They're ready for a ton of different styles, a ton of different personalities. Like they come here like with open arms and that's like the best feeling when we walk out there and everyone's just ready to party. It's the most fun for trying out new music too. It's the yeah, best way to like gauge you know, it's like it's putting it on go. SoundCloud almost. There's yeah. thousands of kids out there that are going to listen to it right there Instant in that reaction. moment. One minute's music for one minute's time. If it works in that moment, then you know you have like And you'll just be like... Song. That's the unique thing about electronic <laughs> dance music, you know? Like, there hasn't been that much music like that before. Where it's like yeah. this one moment, and if that's the moment, then you got the song. And like, obviously everything around it's very important, and songs don't go number one on beatboard just for having a great drop. Yeah. Yeah. But that's the indicator. That's how you know it's gonna work. So you see kids lose it. And this is the best place to like see that right in front of your face. Speaking of that, what is your favorite song to play that really gets the crowd going that you found? We uh, we get really hype over this this one edit. Uh, it's, it's party favorite, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Booyah, his remix of Booyah. Uh, this kid party favorite did a remix of Booyah, and there's just something about it. It's just real loud and crazy. But lately, like our new stuff, we've been playing like some of the records we did with Gladiator, our new record with Paper Diamond, mm -hmm. and like we're working on a ton of new music. So like all our latest originals have been like the most fun for us to get like that reaction, like Ryan was talking about. It's like we're trying to step out of our comfort zone with our next few releases. So being able to go see all our fans and like slowly like work it in and see how they feel about stuff we're working on is like really really valuable to us. Well, speaking of people that you've worked with, like Paper Diamond, um, who do you look for for inspiration? And who would you like to collab with, if you we, could pick anyone? We, I think we get inspired by a lot of like, up-and-coming people, more than like big people. Like We'll like just peruse SoundCloud forever, like yeah. find some dude. Like We find like several new artists a week, or try to, and like either work it into some kind of edit or a set or just experience somebody new and fresh like nothing gets us more excited than finding some new kid that has a song that's amazing versus like hearing one of our friends who's huge already put out a big song like that's great but it's so much more exciting when like who the fuck is this kid and this song is incredible and this kid probably hears you playing it and is like oh my god and that's cool too that's that mine to us, you know? <laughs> it still is us when when huge dudes play our song it's like the most gratifying thing in the world more gratifying than playing your own show. And it's cool to be able to do that now you know, on a smaller scale. But uh, yeah, like we're just we're really inspired by a lot of our friends too. Like we just like had a session with Brills last week. Sammy's one of our super homies. Like Carnage is a friend of ours. You know what I mean? Like Paper Diamond obviously is a friend of ours. Like these guys are always listening to completely different shit than we're listening to. Like using different stuff to make music. They're right now like on a whole different kick than we are most times. So we get in the studio together and it's like, yo, have you heard these songs? Have you heard these songs? Like have you used this plugin? Whatever. It's like we just like feed off of each other. And we're blessed that like the majority of all our friends do music or are involved with music. Literally That's all good. of our close friends we hang out with either produce or involved with it in some respect. So like 
everyone's always just talking shop and sharing with each other and it's like you can help each other grow too probably yeah, to give definitely. you some very specifics right now single like Carmack, obviously, GTA, uh, Wave, Racer. Wave Racer, Flume, all that future base, Rusty, Snappy Chick, this kid we just found, this Rare. Jersey Club kid. Um, she did a song with Dirt Nasty. <laughs> trying to, like, I love Dirt Nasty. <laughs> yeah, amazing. we love him too. The song's amazing. Um, well, so what are you currently working on now? Do you have any albums That's what coming we're up? Right just now that? Is the Dirt Nasty song. The Dirt we're Nasty song? That, like, the past two weeks are really, really yeah. hard. We have two songs coming out on Ultra, probably closer to the next, the end of next month. And uh, those are kind of big festival tunes for summer shows and stuff. And then we're working on a three or four song EP to follow that up with. One of the songs on there definitely being the Dirt Nasty thing. We have a couple other ideas right now we're really psyched about. Yeah, immediate future, definitely like Ultra release, our own solo EP, and then just... And we're working on a lot collabs. of like not halftime trap music. In, In terms of stylistically, we're trying to just like show people another side. So a lot of the remixes we put out have been in a certain sort of format. We want to show people like do whatever. Yeah, we've gotten bored. Yeah, we're getting psyched about other kinds of records. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like we want to do that. We want to keep it fresh. Yeah, and we're lucky enough to have a fan base who's so open and so like well versed in what's going on that it doesn't really shock them. I don't think. And we had. We've had tons of long conversations between us, like, is this going to work? Is this not going to work? Are our kids going to feel this? We put out a completely different record than what they're used to. But, like, I think we've come to realize, like, our fans just want to rage. You know what I mean? And if we're putting out stuff that we're psyched about, we put all our all into, they're definitely going to give us just as much back. Yeah. So now it's just like, what do you want to make? You know what I mean? Absolutely. Like, what gets you psyched? I think, yeah, and I think we initially thought, and it probably was true, at when, like, trap became a big thing in bass music, that those kids who initially gravitated towards that stuff were really, like, myopic and didn't, like, want to explore, like, Big Room or, like, Jersey Club. We're kind of finding the opposite now that we, like, work them into our sets and make some of this music. Like, bass music heads are, like, extremely open-minded as long as it's, like, a smack fest. Yeah. So, like, it really doesn't matter, like, exactly what the format is in. There's these certain things the kids want, like the huge kicks, the huge 808s of shit. Other than that, you can kind of like paint your own palette of stuff, and that's what we're really trying to do. It's like, you gotta think, like, we're always so worried, like, oh, all these kids gravitate towards us because these couple songs that we put out that they really like. You gotta figure, like, you're one artist in their iTunes, you know what I mean? Like, you're one of a hundred songs in their dance playlist, you know what I mean? And they're not just listening to all trap all the time. It's like, I want them to be able to go to Loud Pack for more than just this one vibe. So they're like, oh, we listen to this kind of Loud Pack song. We listen to this EP they did that was a little different. We listen to their festy stuff. It's like, we want to just give a bigger range because that's what like, we really love to do and love to produce. And like, we've developed a fan base doing one thing, but I don't think that necessarily means we can't grow. Yeah, you don't want to be closed-minded. Yeah. So that's good. Um, also, we saw you guys last summer in New York City at um, Hammerstein. Highline. Highline. Highline with branches. Highline with branches. Yes. So, that's one of we our were there. Shows. <laughs> He's lurking around here. So. He's around here somewhere. Yeah. So how was um, how was that show? You know, in comparison to what you're going to do today, do you have anything? I mean, granted, it's a different venue. Yeah. This is a festival that so was. That was almost a year ago, club. wasn't it? Yeah. Um, almost a year ago. That show, like, you learned a whole lot from. It was one of the first shows where it's like Loud Pack headlining in a major market. We picked our own opener. We paid for our own production. You know what I mean? Like we've headlined shows in all kinds of cities. We've got to do a lot of amazing things, like with us being the top billed act. But we've never really curated a show the way we did for Highline before that, and uh, it went really well. You know what I mean? Like we are now like closer with branches than almost anyone else in EDM. You know what I mean? And like that relationship started because of shows like that. We realized like. We worked so well together. We picked that opener. We realized like the production stuff that we paid for paid off and made the show look that much crazier and that much better. Like now that we're doing festivals and we're gonna plan our own tour coming up and stuff, like having experiences like Highline really to show you like what it takes to bring it up another step. So how do you feel about the growth of trap music so far? Um, I know you don't you said you don't want to be too close-minded, um, but where do you see it going in the future? It's just not trap and you know, like, 
the way I look at that, like when I think trap, I think a certain tempo, a certain kind of drum feel, and like a lot of those things are still apparent in like twerk and Jersey Club and all these other like yeah. genres that were around but are now like getting way bigger limelight because of how enormous trap has become. And I think that all the producers that were making that, and a lot of those dudes were making Louboutin before that, are just starting to take all these sound palettes, these weird left field synths that aren't like big room house synths, and put them into these like interesting drum formats, whether it's 140 halftime like trap or like 100 BPM twerk or whatever it is. Like it's about the palette of sounds. I think, I think what, what trap was good for and what why trap is important at all in the span of like electronic music is because it brought like a super hip hop element into what a lot of other people were doing. And yeah. that's what Ryan means. Like I don't I don't necessarily think of trap as like this standalone genre in EDM that's gonna have its own stages and its own things like it probably will but I the, as people came up doing that and like built our name off that kind of genre like we've just seen all of our friends and peers who like were part of that huge eruption kind of like move different ways but not necessarily like take the energy out of it you know what I mean like trap doesn't feel like house music in big room and Electro and all this other stuff because it's so good. You know what I mean? It has a different kind of bounce. All the samples and like the shit that people talk about in trap songs are just way more like urban and hip hop influenced. And that's something that you weren't seeing at EDC before 2010. Nope. Not at least. I mean, maybe here and there. Like there was guys like Rusko, those guys who use influences of all kinds of shit. But like you wouldn't hear like 20 rap songs on a bass stage before this trap thing happened. So I think it was really useful because it gave kids like me who started out doing rap and ended up listening to dance music an outlet for all their influences and stuff. But I don't necessarily see like us, Floss, Bauer, RL, whoever's crushing it in trap, repping that genre and only that genre for life. You know, there's guys who will play Deep House forever. Yeah. These guys will play house music forever. I've had conversations with all these dudes who do trap and I just feel like all of them want to like make all kinds of songs, you know? It's, it's definitely like the hot thing and it's popped up insanely in the last two years, but I think it's helped influence a lot of other stuff in a major way and I'm not sure how much trap by itself can stand alone forever, you know? I think it's very natural too because our generation grew up on hip hop, not on dance music. We did. <laughs> and dance music has become the dominating force, at least in the festival scene and the circuit and stuff. So it's soon to be like the music industry in general. It's just the biggest shit. Definitely. I mean, yeah, I just think it's like it's a very natural progression for kids who grew up listening to rap music and then <laughs> went to these shows and were like, holy shit, like this is what's going on now, and the genre is kind of getting blended together. It's just like yeah. a no-brainer to me. Like, it's now it's like radio. Happening, you know? There wouldn't be Katy Perry Dark Horse if there wasn't this big trap movement over the last two years, you know what I mean? Like there wouldn't be that Avril single if there wasn't all this new trap stuff. There wouldn't be big EDM drops and Britney Spears songs if Zed and all these dudes had come up so big. And they're playing year. Get Low and Turn Down For What? Everywhere. Radio. <laughs> spins a week on KISS FM and Power 106. But I honestly don't get that sick of it, if you want me to be honest. <laughs> I mean, we're psyched to hear it on there. Yeah, exactly. It's huge for it's us. It's amazing. We hear Dylan or something like that on there. It's like, dude, that could be us. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm.